Today, we are talking about thyroid and medications. Just so you can understand a little bit more about the medications that you are on, what the side effects might be, and why you may or may not need to change. So you understanding is going to make you a better patient advocate for yourself. So for those of you who don't know me, my name is Amy Horneman. I'm a thyroid specialist, functional medicine practitioner, and I love, love, love working with people one-on-one to get you your life back. So when we're talking about thyroid meds, let's break them down first of all. First, we have the, we're going to call them synthetics, but I don't want you to think of that as a bad name. Synthetic is not necessarily a bad thing. It just, I don't know, it's just the term that we give the T4 and T3 separate medications. So your T4 meds under the synthetic name are going to be your your levothyroxine, that's generic, levoxyl, synthroid, which is brand T4, tyrosine, unithroid, tyrosine, soul. So those are your T4 medications that are manufactured by a drug company. Now the NDTs are manufactured by a drug company too, so we're going to get into that in a minute. But your T4 formulations contain different fillers. And sometimes if you are not doing very well on one particular T4 combo or T4 medication, rather, you might need to look at the different fillers that are in your medication. So something like Levo, generic Levo. And now the different manufacturers make generic Levo, um, like Lanet and Myelin. Those who are actually gluten-free but most manufacturers of levothyroxine, generic, add in corn, dyes, gluten, lactates, lactose, and sucrose. So corn, dyes, gluten, lactose, sucrose. So that we see across the board in most generic formulations of T4. So most of your levothyroxine, will contain all of the different fillers. And that's really where we see people react. Now, sometimes you might just react because you're a non-converter. You might need T3 only. But if you are on synthetic T4 and you are on the generic, sometimes it is worth just changing over. It's a one-to-one ratio. You're on 50 generic, go to 50 synthroid, go to 50 tyrosine and just swap over. And most of the time, your doctor will be okay with doing this because you're just basically asking for brand to see if that works better for you and your body. Oftentimes, we're seeing hair loss increase with people being on the generic form of T4. We're seeing people just not get better, still struggle with symptoms. Sometimes people will actually gain weight. We see rashes and highs. Uh, uticaria, we're seeing um, just a more allergic type of reaction, so a more of a histamine intolerance with the generic versus the brand. So sometimes just making that little switch to brand makes all the difference in the world. So when we're talking about brand, we're talking about Synthroid. Now, Synthroid still contains fillers. Don't think that just switching to brand Synthroid eliminates all fillers and that you won't have any reaction whatsoever. You still might. So Synthroid still does contain corn. It still contains dyes. It still contains lactose. So now those, when I say lactose, if you are truly diagnosed lactose intolerant, that's one thing. Maybe that little, little bitty sprinkle of lactose in the Synthroid might react to you. But for most people, even those of us who are lactose intolerant, I use air quotes for that, or let's say lactose sensitive, or we're just sensitive to the cheapy, cheapy lactose. Like if you eat a bowl of ice cream, you're going to get gassy. Yeah, absolutely. If you're eating some American cheese from the deli, that's cheap garbage plastic, you're going to have a reaction. But if you're eating a high quality form of dairy, like a grass fed cheddar, most people don't react to those. And actually grass-fed cheddar cheese doesn't contain a lot of lactose. We see the lactose as a sugar, and that's going to be in your milk if you drink a glass of milk 
or your ice cream. So don't rule out Synthroid because you're like, whoa, I'm lactose intolerant. That small amount that's in the Synthroid may or may not affect you. Okay, then we're moving on to tyrosine, which is pure, pure. Tyrosine actually contains almost zero fillers, as, as low in the filler department as you can possibly get. That is tyrosine. Now, you can go one step further and go into tyrosine soul. Not many prescribers are even aware that this has come out. It's a more, um, it's a more recent drug. It is uh, in the liquid form. It is very pure. There are absolutely no fillers whatsoever in it, and many sensitive patients do better on tyrosine soul than they do on tyrosine. But tyrosine is the most purest form of T4 that you can get. So if you are reacting and you want to try to, let's say, upgrade your T4 medication and you're on the synthetics, then I would suggest upgrading to Synthroid and then tyrosine. Now, when we're talking about price, Many times insurance companies aren't really thrilled about paying for tyrosine, so you may have a very high copay, but for some of you, that might be worth it. Same thing with uh, Synthroid. Some of you might have a very high copay with brand Synthroid, but again, it might actually be worth it because we're talking about how you respond to your thyroid medication and whether or not it's doing its job. So if you do have to go from $4 copay for your generic that's causing a lot of symptoms and side effects to $20 a month or $100 a month for the brand, that might be a worthwhile investment. So then moving on when we're talking about T3, there's not a lot of difference between brand and generic T3. Now, according to one chart that I found online, this is comparing the leothyronine, which is your generic T3. This is comparing leothyronine manufactured by Sigma Pharma. Um, leothyronine does have corn, but it's not showing anything else as compared to brand Cytomel that actually contains gluten and sucrose. So in the T3 department, going to brand is not necessarily an upgrade. It's not necessarily a better way to go. So if you are on the synthetics doing leothyronine, the generic form of T3, not really a problem. I've tried both brand and generic. I don't notice a difference. Many of my patients respond very, very well to the generic. No, I've never had a patient that has to go to brand Cytomel because they're not responding to the generic form in the T3 department. Then when we go into the NDT, so your T4, T3 combo formulas. So NDT, natural desiccated thyroid, you have your armor, you have NP, you have WP, you have nature thyroid. When we're looking at armor thyroid, that does contain corn. So those of you who are sensitive to corn, you might want to consider changing to something like NP, which is one of the more, we'll say, pure forms of NDT medications. NP is said to not contain any of the, the following, corn, dyes, gluten, lactose, sucrose. Nature Thory contains lactose. WP thyroid contains lactose. Compounded might still contain corn. It just all depends on your individual compounding pharmacy if you are getting compounded T4, T3, you might want to ask them what they're using as fillers. Now, all of that being said with your NDTs, yes, I can say NP thyroid is, is filler free, but we've also had problems with NDT. NP had issues over the summer where some patients experience the reported increased T3 amount in the, in the pills. Most of my patients actually experienced a decrease. So we still really don't know what the truth was there. We just know that the badges got messed up. I will, I will continue to come back to this theory. And this is still very, it's, it's individualized. It's controversial. There's many practitioners out there that absolutely love, love, love NDT. 
I do like it in certain situations. And if a patient is on it already and they're doing very well, my goodness, we certainly don't change. But if you are on NDT and you've run through the gamut, you've tried Armour, you've tried NP, you, you've tried Nature Thread and then NP, and you're just not feeling your best, you're just not quite optimized. There are two reasons for that, in my opinion. Number one, it is an 80-20 split. So as we increase your NDT medication, regardless of the fillers in it, we are still increasing that 80% T4, 20% T3. So all we're doing is going up in both. We're increasing your T4 and we're increasing your T3, but we're increasing your T4 substantially because that makes 80% of that individual pill. Only 20% of that is T3. So that only kind of goes up in little tiny increments. Sometimes as we go up in your dose of NDT medication, more of that T4 is converted over to reverse T3. I see this all the time in my patients. We test, we test, we test. We look at that reverse, it's through the roof. So yes, you're on a very high dose of NDT. And yes, good for you. You at least get a little bit of T3 in that mix, but too much of that T4 is converting over to reverse T3. And that's blocking the efficacy of T3 at the cell level. So it can look really, really good in the blood. Your T3 might even be a 3.5 or above. But if your reverse T3 is an 18, then it's not really getting to the cell. And it's not really doing its job and you're still going to suffer from hypo symptoms. Increasing that dose of NDT is not going to help the situation whatsoever. It's not going to fix it. So with NDT, now the nice thing with it is that we can... If you are working with an out-of-the-box thinking practitioner, we can add in T3 medication to change that ratio. So now you're adding in T3 leothyronine. The T3 goes up. Your NDT will stay the same. So that T4 dose that you're on will stay the same. Or we can lower your NDT if your reverse T3 is too high. We can lower the NDT dose to bring down the T4. We can add in T3 and now your ratio changes. So now you might be more at a 60-40 a split with your T4 versus T3. And with that higher T3 level, that will help the reverse come down, hopefully, as long as all other conversion factors are being addressed. So that, will, that added T3 will help that reverse T3 come down. It'll help your free T3 go up and alleviate symptoms. The other thing that I'm just kind of on the fence about with NDT medication is the fact that it is naturally desiccated from porcine thyroid glands. Now this, again, you can talk to a bunch of different practitioners and practitioners that I highly, highly respect have said there is no problem with this whatsoever. There's no issue with using natural desiccated thyroid from porcine thyroid glands. It's tested, it is made by a drug company. So also for those of you who think that you're going to go natural by doing NDT, it, yeah, you're natural in the fact that you're getting, um, say, T4 and T3 medication from a pig, and that's kind of na natural, right? But it is still manufactured by a drug company. Um, so uh, I guess my hesitation, so I'm not against it, my hesitation with it is that we are not testing the pigs for hypothyroidism and all mammals can have it. So if we are making these batches, and that's why I'm wondering why we've had problems with armor, we've had problems with NP, we've had problems with nature thyroid. In the last year, we had problems with nature thyroid and NP. So we've had problems with these NDTs being recalled. I, I do not know any recall for tyrosine, synthroid, or leothyronine, just for the record. So we're having all these recalls from the NDT medications. And I'm wondering if we're not getting batches that have too much or too little of the hormones. Well, that's why they were recalled because that's what they were finding. But why are we, it's, I think it comes back to, okay, we can blame it on the manufacturing process or we can blame it on the fact that logic says when we're taking out the thyroid glands of pigs, we're not testing every single one of them for hypothyroidism. What if one of them has a decrease in T4 and T3? So we're getting less of those. Yes, they're mixed in with the other pig glands, but that can bring down the overall dosing in the manufacturing process for each individual pill.
So we don't know if that 30 milligram pill contains 80-20 split of T4, T3. We don't know with 100% confidence and certainty that each pill that you are taking is the exact, exact amount. We know with pretty much 90% certainty, 95% confidence that the synthroid tyrosine leothyronine that you're taking is exactly what it says. The 25 micrograms, the 5 micrograms, the 15 micrograms, 25 micrograms, the 50 micrograms, you're getting, I mean, and then it's up to you as to whether or not it, it gets absorbed and converted. So then it, it becomes more on you, the person, in terms of waiting an hour before drinking coffee or eating before and after taking your thyroid medication, not taking it at around iron, not taking it around calcium, taking your supplements away from it, taking your T4 before bed to improve absorption. So all of those kind of lifestyle factors come back onto you, the person, not the manufacturer. Whereas we can kind of put back the blame on the manufacturer for NDT when you're, we're getting batches that are recalled and you are not feeling very well. So hopefully that gives you a nice overview of the thyroid medications. For more information, you can always go to my podcast, The Thyroid Fix. Subscribe because I give you a ton, a ton, a ton of great info on there. We are on every single podcast platform. And if you would like a free discovery call, the link is always in the show notes, but you can go to my website at amyhorneman.com and click on book a call. We can jump on a free discovery call and learn how I can help you to get your life back.